For Gino DeMarco in the Geneva Golden Tornadoes, 1995 was a season full of promise. The steady rise of the program pointed toward a flourish of big victories, yet the question that had dogged Geneva college football for decades still remained. Could Geneva consistently compete with the best that the NAIA had to offer? Could Geneva handle a schedule devised to test even the stoutest of football squads? And could Geneva finally overcome the age-old obstacle that was Westminster? For Gino DeMarco and the Golden Tornadoes, the questions provided a catalyst for action. Because in 1995, Geneva College had all the answers and then some. In 1995, Geneva College football dared to dream. expectations for the 95 season were very high based on what happened in 94. We had a, a strong nucleus returning. We had uh, uh, our program believing in that they could win. We had to find some key players, especially in offense, that would fit those necessary roles. In week two, West Liberty tested the upstart Tornadoes. It was a test Geneva was more than ready for. Geneva's defense set the tone early, showing why they were fast becoming one of the top units in the NAIA. and the Geneva offense proved to be the perfect complement to Geneva's rugged defense. On a perfect autumn evening, Geneva definitely mixed the run with the pass. buried West Liberty early, then the Geneva offense scored often en route to a 30-13 home opening win. In week three, Taylor visited Geneva with hopes of solving the stingy Golden Tornado defense. Taylor's hopes were dashed early and often by a Tornado D that confronts and triumphs. Taylor to just 77 total yards and recording their second shutout of the year. Meanwhile, Gino DeMarco's offense wrote the perfect recipe for success, mixing equal parts run and pass.
Murray had all the ingredients for another fine afternoon, rushing for 112 yards and two touchdowns. Rich McClellan to Ron Michelle combination accounted for seven completions and two more scores. Never in doubt, Geneva cruised to a 44 to nothing win over Taylor. In week four, Geneva dominated visiting Urbana with an offense that they played with the precision and grace of a symphony. Their Tornado O finished with 582 total yards en route to 59 points. Once again, it was Rich McClellan orchestrating the offense like the conductor of the Boston Pops, with confidence, savvy, and a flair for the dramatic. His favorite target on this afternoon was Todd Durish who collected three receptions, including a 29-yard touchdown catch and run. On defense, the Golden Tornadoes were composing their own music. This time, the tune was heavy metal. defense punished Urbana and pummeled them into submission. For the encore, backup tailback Tim McGraw took the football 11 yards into the Urbana end zone for the game's final score. Once again, the Golden Tornadoes turned into command performance with a 59-12 romp for Urbana. On offense, again, we were fortunate to finish in the top 10 in the country, mixing the run and the pass very well. It starts with our quarterback, Rich McClellan, who had another outstanding season, and a tailback in Willie Murray, who again, rushed for 1,000 yards. In fact, a school record this year. Uh, we like to throw the ball to the fullback, and Andy Snyder had a tremendous year catching the football as the Todd Dursch at tight end. And when you add Ron Michelle, a big play threat, along with Jim Santamara, Mike Holler, and Sam Becker at the wide receiver positions, we felt that we had a total offensive package. Uh, the key was our offensive line. We felt they came together and was able to provide the protection and the run blocking that we needed to have the type of offense we did. On offense, DeMarco employed a fistful of weapons all directed at one target, the end zone. With a double threat in quarterback Rich McClellan, the offense was poised to attack. McClellan utilized the acrobatic skill of wideout Ron Michelle to perfection. And when his go-to guy was covered, McClellan pitched to bruising tight end Todd Durish.
If McClellan and his receivers provided the heart of the Geneva offense, the offensive line and Willie Murray provided its soul. Murray's burst ranked with the finest in Geneva's rich history of rushers. Geneva offense provided a season full of excitement. When Geneva took over the football, the Geneva offense took over the football game. In week five, Geneva faced its sternest test of the young season. If the Golden Tornadoes were in fact for real, they would have to produce against one of the finest teams in the country. Tiffin provided the perfect test for Gino DeMarco's youthful squad. And on this general Saturday evening in West Central Ohio, the Golden Tornadoes had all the right answers. <music> Willie Murray led Geneva's offensive onslaught with an early 57-yard run. and score, Murray again took off for the end zone, this time from 51 yards out. But Tiffin hung tough with an impressive offense of their own. Geneva continually riddled Tiffin's defense, mixing the run and pass to perfection. defense had some early problems, the Tornado D regrouped to throttle Tiffin's attack. Possibly winning the battle between top 20 teams, 48-28. The sky was the limit on a homecoming Saturday for the Golden Tornadoes. Geneva welcomed a Wilmington team noted for its aerial attack. The stalwart Geneva defense closed down the airways via the interception. cleared the runway on the opening kickoff, streaking 90 yards for the score. Then, 
Gino DeMarco's offense turned the INTs into Golden Tornado TDs. Rich McClellan found the autumn skies friendly, passing for 334 yards and four touchdowns. And tomorrow gathered seven receptions and Ron Michelle added seven more on this record smashing day. John Schmidt put the exclamation point on Geneva's sixth win with a 13-yard interception return for a touchdown as the Tornadoes blew by Wilmington 49-14. This year, defensively, we were able to finish in the top four in defense, and I think due in part to the people that we had up front. Uh, Paul Worsing had a tremendous year at nose guard, as did John Schmidt, Seth Rosenberger. Inside our linebackers were Scott Slater and Marty Casper did a super job being able to plug up the middle. But I think the biggest improvement that we had was in our defensive backfield. With Jason Carter at strong safety, DeMon Moore, and Gary Sharp at free safety, along with John Rose at short corner, uh, we were able to use some different coverages. Our nickel package with Cecil Brazos and be able to put pressure on the quarterback with a kid like Danny Gardner allowed us to use so many different schemes and I think really confused some offenses. On defense, DeMarco devised a breakneck crew with one mission in mind impede the offense. To the chagrin of the opposition, Geneva's defense took the mission to heart. in a controlled frenzy, Geneva's D won the respective opponents the hard way. They earned it. Geneva took its perfect record to Akron, Ohio for another October date with Malone. Early on, it looked like business as usual for the Golden Tornadoes as Geneva jumped out to an early lead. But Malone scrambled back and for the first time all year, Geneva had a dogfight on its hands.
second quarter scores put Malone out in front, 14 to 10. And with time running out, Geneva could no longer solve Malone's stingy D. With a backyard brawl with Westminster looming on the horizon, Gino DeMarco's charges tasted defeat for the first time in 95 at the hands of Malone. After the Malone game, I think the biggest thing was dealing with the, uh, the emotion of losing our first game in over a year uh, in a very difficult contest to being prepared emotionally to face our number one rival in our biggest game of the season in Westminster. And I think it just typified the attitude of our football team and the character of our players that they were ready to play and came out and played exceptionally well against a talented team. Following their disappointing loss to Malone, the Golden Tornadoes eyed redemption against arch rival Westminster. A win against the Titans would mark Geneva's first regular season win over Westminster in more than three decades. Early on, Geneva dominated play, only to have costly turnovers turn scoring opportunities into opportunities lost. Despite totally dominating the Titans, Geneva led by a scant field goal at the half. In the second half, the November sky turned ugly, and so did Geneva's disposition. On defense, the Tornadoes punished Westminster for 37 years of insolence. Meanwhile, on offense, Willie Murray buckled up his chin strap and put a hurting on any and all Titans in his path. Murray's onslaught put Geneva in command of the game, and the Tornadoes could sense their date with destiny. Revenge never tasted as sweet as it did on this cold November day in Wilmington, Pennsylvania. The final score, Geneva 17, Westminster nothing. In its first playoff game in nearly a decade, Geneva was primed to avenge an earlier loss to Malone. On offense, Geneva sliced through the Malone defense en route to an early lead. Defensively, Geneva had the answers to Malone's counterattack. But late in the fourth quarter, Malone countered behind a wild scramble by Shane Nalepa. With a game in reach, Nalepa rallied Malone to a 21-17 lead. Ron Michel had a counterpunch of his own. With just a minute left in the fourth quarter, he shocked the crowd racing 98 yards for what seemed like the game winner. Nalepa was not done yet. He engineered one final drive deep into Geneva territory. And Bennington's 27-yard field goal, as time ran out, dashed Geneva's hopes for a national title.
think after you sort out all the emotion of the disappointment of that Malone playoff game, I think our kids and our coaches, our fans finally realized that this football team did achieve the greatness that everyone expected, and then some. Um, I think about the commitment that our players had made in the offseason and the togetherness that was achieved and how hard our coaches worked, how the community just really rallied around uh, this college football team. And it was a very special year. And I think uh, you walked off the field, you know, in Massillon and a little bit of shock, but after you realize uh, what's been accomplished with the kids in that locker room, it's an awesome thought to think how good we're going to be in the future and in the status of Geneva football in days to come. The dream of a national championship slipped away on a faithful day in Canton, Ohio. Yet so many dreams came true for Gino DeMarco and a fine collection of student athletes. Geneva dared to challenge the finest programs in the nation. They looked inside themselves to see if they had the stuff of champions. And on a blustery November day in Wilmington, they discovered the answer. Geneva was ready to play football with the best the NAIA had to offer. And they were poised to succeed. 1995 would be remembered as the magical season when Geneva truly had turned the corner. In 1995, Geneva College Football dared to dream. Just uh, thank you. Lord, we thank you for the effort of the coaches. Thank you for the effort of the administration. But Lord, I most of all, thank you for these guys. Father, I pray that you would just uh, teach them a lesson, Lord, that in anything in life, Father God, with your help, we're more than conquerors. Mm -hmm. To you be the glory. Amen. 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 Amen.